Grazie, Presidente. E gra Thank you very much, President. Thank you, Vice President. It was very interesting to hear from you. I hope you're right in terms of building this shield for European countries under the uh, NIST to the uh, Cyber Resilience Act. I hope it works because otherwise my colleague Glucksman will be right, who's already uh, highlighted our time lag. These, this leg legislative framework, will, will it be as quick as the attacks? And then the second question is the administrative burden for our companies in order to come in line with risk reduction, will that make them less competitive vis-à-vis -vis other companies elsewhere in the world? And then what can the EU do to support what these companies do? Yes, with the guidelines, but also in terms of resources. Thank you. Herr Vizepräsident. Mr. Vice President. Mr. Bonfrisco has the right when he says that Madame Bonfrisco is correct when she asks whether we are sure that we will have total protection and that it will lead to the effects that we uh, wish to see. What we do know is that we have a level of protection that is unprecedented in Europe. Now, that doesn't mean that um, will be able to stop any attack from any type of attacker. No, of course, they will only redouble their efforts in attacking us. We, will, we are an objective, we're a target, and we will remain a target. However, in the future, we will have uh, better, more solid defences. You referred to... Um, the legislative package and whether or not it will have the desired effect. As you know, we're going through a difficult period. We still don't have the substantive agreement uh, that needs to be implemented. It still has to get through votes in the European Parliament and get through the Council. However, we are nearing the end of the road. And... I believe and uh, can agree with the previous speaker who referred to uh, strategic defence. It's a question of uh, strategic defence and also financial defence. By whenever we can help by helping to raise this protective wall, we have to do that. We have to help governments and also businesses who are facing difficult situations. Do you have an additional question, madam? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, another question. Uh, Vice Presidente. Uh, Vice President, as you know, Italy is uh, the seventh country in terms of cyber attacks and it's the, the number one country in Europe. So we need to support uh, this process, which is important because Italy is a strategic country in terms of uh, big infrastructure. We talked about the uh, undersea projects, but there are others. What do you intend to do? Thank you. Mr. Vice President. There is no doubt that Italy is a very important member state when it comes to the topic we're discussing today. Both because of its size and because a number of powers could be tempted to create problems for the country or to um, undertake attacks against a country such as Italy. But as I said to Mr Gallagher a moment ago, we're not talking about specific cases here. What we're talking about is a regulatory framework that's end result 
will be protecting our networks and protecting our critical infrastructure. And this is a, a framework that will cover all EU member states, regardless of their size or their exposure to risk of attack. Mr. Castaldo has the last questions.